G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this week's video in this series to accompany free math worksheets from our website. Um, I'm going to refer to the worksheets straight away. The worksheets have changed this week. So we've done 11 weeks where almost every week it was um, uh, practicing a, a number fact set using particular strategies and so on. And you'll know that if you've watched the videos. This week we're looking at um, an operation or an algorithm a computational algorithm, it's subtraction, two digit numbers with regrouping. Um, so on each sheet you'll see the, the first half of the sheet is a series of those questions. The later ones have a lot more zeros in the ones place because taking away from zero is slightly more difficult with regrouping than the other numbers. And then at the bottom of the sheet there are some revision number fact questions for addition and subtraction. I'd love to hear what you think of the new topic uh, the other thing that I'd like to hear from you about is the second video. So if you're looking at this on my website, you'll see below this video there's another one. And this video is aimed at your students. So I'm doing the one video for you and then another video for students. I'm hoping that it will be useful. I think teachers, um, teachers have told me that they're looking at sometimes for videos to show to their students. You might be a homeschooler and want something to show your children who are your students. So. Um, please let me know. Love to have a comment on the web page or um, send me an email, or whatever you like. If you're watching this video on YouTube, by the way, you should use the link below the video to get access to the page where the worksheets are. Otherwise, um, you're just listening to me talk and you could probably, you know, use the worksheets in your classroom. So let's have a look. Now, of course, you know how to teach subtraction. I'm not suggesting for a moment that you don't already teach this to your students, but I'm just going to make some recommendations and, you know, hopefully, as I always say, I hope these are useful to you. So we have 42 take away 25. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I've observed in my students is that they want to use the word from and then they get mixed up as to which way around it is. So if you do this quickly and say two from five is three, four, uh, two from four is two, get the answer. If you say it quickly enough, you don't even notice that there's a mistake being made. Two from five is three, but that's not the right way to do the operation. So I prefer to tell students to focus on the first number as the number that we have at the moment, and then we're going to take away. So I deliberately use the words, whoops, take away as common everyday language rather than subtract, um, and talk about two take away five. Can we do that? All right, so quickly. Um, we can do it, but only if we do regrouping, or we can say, no, there aren't enough. So we're going to regroup. Now you could use other words for regroup. There are words like trading, there's making and breaking tens. Those are quite useful. I have come across the word borrowing, and I don't think that's helpful. In the old days, we used to add 10 and add another 10 and called that borrowing and paying back. Um, in the new, in the modern, and I call it modern. We've been doing it since I was a very young teacher in the early days. This method is perhaps called a, a decomposition algorithm. There's no borrowing in it at all. We take a 10, bust it up, make it into ones. There's no paying back of anything. So to me, it makes no sense at all to say borrowing. You feel free to do what you like, of course, with your own students. And they may be used to that language and maybe that's, that's fine. But I just want to make the point, it's not actually logically sensible. Two take away five, we can't do. So we're going to regroup or trade. We're going to take a 10, leaving three of them behind and regroup that into 10 ones. We'll write that as a one in front of the two. You could cross the two out as well and write 12 if you want to. But I think that's more crossing out than you need. 12 take away five is a number fact. So it will help if students know their number facts. 12 take away 5 is 7, 3 take away 2 is 1. In fact, on that point about knowing number facts, it's my view that if the students don't know their subtraction number facts, they need to do that for revision, do it for homework or whatever, and get that nailed before they do too many of these because um, you really need that in order to be successful with the algorithm. Let me point out on that point also, if a student was allowed to use a calculator, a smart kid would say, well, why can't I just use a calculator for the whole thing? If a calculator substitutes for me having to remember things in my mind, why doesn't it substitute for knowing how to do this? Good question. There's probably not a good answer for it either. So I think number facts is something you have to know. The algorithm is something you have to be able to do yourself personally, mechanically, if you like, 
and we'll use the calculators in the future for much harder questions. The other point I want to make here, and this is probably the last recommendation, is that we should give students questions that require regrouping or trading from almost from lesson one, when they first start doing subtraction of two-digit numbers, rather than give them what we would normally, in normal teaching practice, we give students easy questions first and then harder ones later. So we might think, okay, let's give a whole bunch where there's no trading, you know, for a couple of days or a week or something, and then do the trading examples. The problem is, the most common mistake that children make, and I'll just illustrate this here, in doing subtraction questions like this, is to get that answer. And I'm assuming, because I, you know, you don't get a chance to watch the child generally when they do it, that they're they are absolutely, they're working at the difference between the pairs of numbers. So the difference between these two is two, the difference there is three, and it's quite possible they're working left to right. And if they are, that's fine for a question where there is no trading or regrouping, but it's terrible for one like this where there is. So in my view, we should start with questions that involve regrouping, discuss what that means, show them with blocks, which I'll put in the other video, and then mix it up with with questions that don't require it. So the students get used to thinking for themselves and working out whether that trading and regrouping is required. You'll see that's what's um, in the, the uh, worksheets. So that's it for this week. I'll talk to you again next week and have a great week.